In 2020, on a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule orbiting Earth, astronauts tap on sleek touchscreens powered by Chromium. Beneath those interfaces lies JavaScript, a language written 30 years earlier in an office cubicle at Netscape. A language that once existed to validate forms and animate buttons now operates in the vacuum of space. It didn't start with a grand vision, it started with a deadline. May 1995, Netscape Communications, a new browser version loomed. Management turned to Brendan Eich, a 33-year-old programmer with a reputation for fast, compact language design. They gave him 10 days. What Ike wrote in that frenzied window would eventually change the shape of software on Earth and beyond. The early web was static. Netscape Navigator had just launched in late 1994, a breakthrough browser that finally made the internet accessible. But pages couldn't respond. They displayed information. They didn't act. To change that, Ike devised a scripting language light enough to embed in HTML and simple enough for designers to use. It wasn't called JavaScript yet. The first names, Mocha, then LiveScript, hinted at its informal nature. The final name came from a marketing agreement with Sun Microsystems, hoping to ride the Java wave. It caused confusion for decades, but the rebranding stuck. Unlike Java, Brendan's language was flexible, prototype-based, and forgiving. It treated functions as first-class citizens and allowed objects to emerge on the fly. It was, by design, the duct tape of the web. In December 1995, Netscape and Sun unveiled JavaScript publicly. The release was backed by 28 companies. In its earliest vision, JavaScript would augment HTML, while more powerful tasks would go to Java applets. But the world had other plans. Microsoft, building its own browser, quickly replicated JavaScript under the name JScript, skirting trademark issues. Though similar in syntax, JScript added proprietary hooks into Windows and Office. Web developers suddenly faced fragmentation. Code that ran in Netscape might behave differently in Internet Explorer. Netscape responded by submitting the language to ECMA International. In 1997, the first ECMAScript standard was ratified. The name was bureaucratic, but the impact was foundational. Competing browsers now had a shared rulebook. As the standards took shape, so did browser capabilities. JavaScript 1, paired with the early DOM, enabled developers to modify page content live. ECMAScript 3, released in 1999, brought error handling, better strings, and regular expressions. JavaScript was no longer an experiment. It was becoming infrastructure. Netscape faltered. Internet Explorer gained ground, bundled into every Windows machine. But in 1998, Netscape made a decision that outlived the company. It open-sourced its browser code. Mozilla was born. Mozilla's early browser efforts culminated in Firefox. Slimmer, faster, and more standards compliant, it challenged Microsoft's inertia. Firefox popularized tabbed browsing and brought developer tools to the forefront. Meanwhile, a small invention inside Internet Explorer, XML HTTP request, began to show promise. It allowed pages to request data from servers in the background. Google quietly experimented with it. In April 2004, Gmail launched. It didn't reload when switching views. It felt like software, not a document. JavaScript stitched it together behind the scenes. Google Maps followed. The browser was changing, so was expectation. In 2005, Jesse James Garrett gave the technique a name, Ajax. Not a technology, but a bundle, JavaScript, XML, HTTP requests, and the DOM. With it came a wave of new interfaces that updated without Flickr. Developers needed better tools. The Mozilla Foundation launched MDN, offering consistent, community-curated documentation. jQuery emerged in 2006, abstracting away browser differences and making Ajax calls and DOM manipulation far simpler. Before we continue, a quick but essential note, because building fast interactive apps doesn't stop at the front end. Enter Convex, sponsor of this video, a full-stack, TypeScript-native backend as a service. If JavaScript gives you the tools to craft rich, performant interfaces, Convex provides the back-end muscle to make them dynamic, real-time, and scalable, with zero boilerplate and zero infrastructure headaches. But the real magic is Convex Chef, an AI-powered app builder that doesn't just generate placeholder code or static templates. Chef understands full-stack architecture. It automatically wires up authentication, file storage, background tasks, and real-time sync on top of Convex's reactive data model. You describe the app. Chef builds it, fully functional, ready to deploy. 
Try it yourself. Head to convex.link slash codesource. Describe the app you want to build and see just how far you can go without writing a single backend line. Convex and JavaScript together? That's front-end velocity meeting back-end intelligence. Now, let's get back to JavaScript's story. JavaScript's once mocked syntax found defenders. Douglas Crockford published JavaScript, the good parts, in 2008. It didn't apologize for the language. It carved out a subset worth mastering. Alongside that book came tools like JSLint and coding conventions that instilled discipline. Flash, long dominant in multimedia, found itself unwelcome on the iPhone. Apple's decision not to support it signaled a shift. The future of interactive media would be built on open web technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. By 2008, Netscape Navigator was retired, but its child had survived, and it was about to accelerate. When Google released Chrome in 2008, its standout feature wasn't just speed, it was the V8 engine, a high-performance JavaScript engine that compiled scripts into native machine code. The performance leap wasn't incremental, it was transformative. V8 would go on to power more than Chrome. In 2009, Ryan Dahl built Node.js on top of it. For the first time, JavaScript could handle server-side logic. Front-end and back-end could speak the same language. That same year, NPM was introduced. Instead of copying snippets from blog posts, developers could install vetted packages with a single command. The ecosystem exploded. By 2011, real-time applications, powered by Node, were becoming viable at scale. Microsoft began to change too. It helped port Node to Windows. In 2012, Enders Heilsberg introduced TypeScript, typed JavaScript with future syntax. In 2015, Visual Studio Code brought an editor tailored for modern JavaScript development. As applications grew more complex, developers turned to frameworks. React, introduced by Facebook in 2013, brought a component-based approach to building UIs. Vue.js, launched by Evan Yu in 2014, offered simplicity and flexibility. Angular, backed by Google, continued to evolve. In the following years, other options like Svelte, Solid, and Alpine.js also emerged, each exploring new approaches to reactivity, compilation, and minimalism. These libraries reshaped how developers wrote interfaces. ECMAScript 6, also called ES2015, landed after years of planning. Classes, modules, arrow functions, promises, it formalized patterns developers had already created themselves. With Babel, they could use the features immediately. JavaScript was growing up. In 2016, a tiny package vanished from NPM. Its name, LeftPad. 11 lines of code. Thousands of builds broke. The incident revealed something uncomfortable. The entire ecosystem was held together by trust and convention. It prompted hard questions about open source governance. Meanwhile, VS Code rose in popularity. Written in TypeScript, powered by Electron, it showcased JavaScript building its own tools. Frameworks evolved. Angular was rewritten. Next.js introduced hybrid rendering for React. The landscape grew crowded, but also more capable. JavaScript began moving to the edge. Cloudflare workers, launched in 2017, ran functions close to users worldwide. Latency dropped. Interactivity scaled. New frontiers emerged. Puppeteer automated browsers. TensorFlow.js ran machine learning models in the browser. React Native powered mobile apps. Johnny5 connected JS to robots. By 2020, Deno 1 was released. Bun came a few years later, offering faster builds and integrated tooling. Both reflected a growing demand for modern, lightweight JavaScript tooling. The OpenJS Foundation formed to bring coherence. Node.js, NPM, ESLint, and more now lived under a single banner. Governance matured. Meanwhile, ECMAScript editions shipped annually. Async await. Optional chaining, private fields, not flashy, but practical. The legal system stirred. Oracle still held the trademark to JavaScript. In 2023, a grassroots effort formed to challenge that claim. The petition drew thousands of signatures, including Eich and Schluter. The outcome remains pending. Flash is gone. Internet Explorer is gone. What remains is a language that transcended its purpose. JavaScript now runs on servers, in browsers, on mobile devices, inside IDEs, at network edges, and in satellites. It powers live chat, machine vision, developer tooling, and spacecraft dashboards. What began in 10 days continues, still evolving. JavaScript is no longer a thing. It's an ecosystem of runtimes, frameworks, packages, and people. Every piece, from Bun to Babel to MDN, is a continuation of the story Brendan Eich began. The next chapter is already underway.
There are no grand conclusions here, just a trail of innovation, scattered across decades, linked by a language that refused to stay in its lane. JavaScript turned the web into an application platform. It opened doors for a generation of developers, and it continues to shape the interface between human creativity and digital experience.